Stack up. Now that's sunk down. Whatever In works, position. right? Flash and clear. Flash and clear. Tango sighted. So this game came out in 2008, and I come back at least once a year to play the shit out of it. And not only is the game as good as it ever was, I feel like it's actually getting better. This game is getting better by default of other games sucking ass, more specifically shooters. The game had a fantastic campaign, tons of single player content, a lot of replayability as well. That's what happens when you have good game design. In most games, when you complete an objective, that's it. You just move on. There's no reason to do it again. You have no real incentive to play it through again. This game, a little bit different. Because the feeling isn't upon completion of an objective. It's the way you go about completing that motherfucker. When you plan something out and everything comes together just right, that's an awesome feeling. That's the payoff. One of the many benefits from good game design. And as you can see, the AI, they will take you the fuck out. They did not give a fuck. You poke your head around a corner, you're gonna get a bullet put through it. More specifically, unlike most of these first-person shooters of today with these mystery bullets and shit, you never really know who shot you, where the bullet came from, you don't know exactly what happened. All you do know is that you're staring at an end game screen and you're going to have to restart and do that shit again. But in this game where I know exactly the direction I got shot from as well as who actually shot me. So now when I restart, I can calculate, recalibrate. Okay, I can do things differently. Games of today, none of that goes on. You just do it again. So that's one of the many elements that I'm factoring in when I say things like games of today are dumbed the fuck down. Games from years ago, I would actually feel smarter <laughs> after playing them. I would feel like I actually learned something. You know, that might not be the case, but at least I wasn't actually feeling dumber from playing them, which is the feeling I get when I play many of these shooters of today. In this game, if you do something stupid, you're more than likely going to have to restart that shit. You're gonna end up dead. Unlike most games of today where it feels like you can essentially brute force your way in or out of any situation. The casual difficulty in this game is probably comparable to most hardcore modes or difficulties of today. Flash and clear. Flash and clear. Flawless, right? You can always be better. I did it perfectly. Talk to him. This is your team. Trust each other above all else. On the field, we are a family. We work together and we protect each other. Let everything else go. Got it? Yes. Yes, sir. Climb up. I fucking love this game, dude. So when it comes to why shooters, especially tactical shooters, which are all but non-existent today, are different, it's not just one or two things, it's many tiny little things that start to add up. A quick example being Blind Fire. Okay, it's called Blind Fire for a reason. Now, of course, it depends, it all depends on what kind of gun you're using, but it should be increasingly difficult for you to connect with your target while blind firing. It shouldn't be easy. Blind fire is unreliable and it should be used as one of the last resorts when it comes to combat. Smoke. There. One of the benefits and luxuries gaming back in the day, we didn't have to pay to fucking customize our characters. No loot boxes, no Eververse. In some games, like this one, you earned your shit. And it's insane to me 
the level of greed when it comes to Bungie and Activision. I mean, they got people to pay for their cosmetics and shit like that, okay? They got people on the hook. They should be extremely grateful that they have a fan base that is not only willing to put up with that nonsense, but are also willing to directly contribute to it by engaging with these microtransactions. They should be fucking grateful. But Bungie and Activision, they see that loyalty as a vulnerability, and they are trying to exploit it to the point where it's like, mind-blowing. They just put out an expansion, paid content, okay? People paid for this shit, and they're locking a lot of the items behind Michael transactions, behind RNG. I mean, seriously, think about that. A lot of the stuff that players actually look forward to when it comes to these expansions, when it comes to this paid DLC for Destiny, a lot of that stuff is being locked behind RNG. Not just microtransactions, I could see if it was like an Overwatch thing, where you could actually build up credits and buy exactly what you want. It would still be some greedy bullshit, but at least the players, okay, the paying customer has some sort of control over the content and how it's distributed. And then, when Bungie gets called out, it's like, whoops, we didn't mean for that to happen. Like it was some sort of an oversight or non-human error. It's bullshit. They designed it to be exactly this way. From the way it appears to me, based on Bungie's actions, it seems that their philosophy is the player's loyalty is a vulnerability and we need to exploit that as much as we possibly can. Let's see how far we can push the fucking envelope. And I'm here watching this bullshit, this fucking fiasco. And I'm asking myself, what is it going to take for people to snap the fuck out of it and tell them to fuck off? Once and for all, fuck off. The same shit happens every single time. The internet might throw a tantrum which might cause Bungie to feel pressured to change some shit. And then when they do, well, people have short-term fucking memory and they go back to doing the same old fucking thing over and over again. I tried to warn you guys the second they introduced microtransactions. You said it then, you're still saying it now. It's just skins, it's just cosmetics. I told you in 2014, whatever fucking year it was, I told you this was going to be a Trojan horse. I said word for word they were going to introduce consumables and things that were going to directly impact the game. Just give them time. And that's exactly what they did. You have to catch this shit before it starts to dig its nails into the game. Because by then it's too late. It's so deeply embedded when it comes to progression, when it comes to everything that the whole game evolves around this bullshit. You have to catch it before it gets to that point. You have to make these companies understand that if they try to introduce this shit into something that you paid for, you're going to resist it. More importantly, if you find out a game's going to come with this bullshit already installed day one, you're not going to buy it. Once they start to understand that, these things will start to go away. It goes without saying, if your peers continue to contribute to this bullshit, pay for these microtransactions, and more importantly, defend the existence of them, they're not going anywhere. They're here to stay. But it's my money. I'll spend it however I wish. Well, I respect that, to a certain degree. With spending comes responsibility. And unfortunately, if you spend a little bit recklessly, it's going to directly impact the rest of us. That's just how it works. These companies believe they need to spend millions of dollars in marketing. The budget when it comes to marketing for most of these AAA games, especially this one, it's obese as fuck. And they want you to pick up the tab. Please do not buy into the bullshit that these microtransactions are some sort of a lifeline, that they absolutely need them. I myself have been playing games for a rather long time. I experienced them at a time where none of this bullshit existed, and they got on just fine. The only thing that has changed in a dramatic way, is their spending when it comes to marketing. That's it. So with that said, I think part of the issue when it comes to us being divided as far as how we feel about these microtransactions, well, perspective. A lot of people, they grew up with games like this, okay? This is the norm to them. 
They don't know any other way. I'm here to try to tell you that there is another way. That's the truth. There's a good amount of younger people out there that grew up in an age of this industry where this was the norm. This is all they know. So when you have someone like me that's talking about this issue, because it is an issue, this younger audience, who quite frankly doesn't know any better, they see it as me whining or complaining over bullshit because I can't get my way or something. They don't get it. They simply do not fucking get it. Because if they did get it, this shit would not go on. A lot of us have put up with quite a bit of bullshit, quite a bit of greed over the years from Warner Brothers' introduction of online passes for consoles to you name it, okay? But it's getting to the point where many of us are starting to just say, you know what, fuck this bullshit. Getting turned off by this stuff. Getting driven away from something we truly love and care about. Years ago, I would have told you it would have taken blindness or some sort of a physical ailment where I could not play video games anymore. That's what it would have taken to get me away from video games. That's not the case anymore. This greedy shit is really doing a number on many of us. It's just too much fucking bullshit. And some of this bullshit unfortunately is starting to seep into the indie level of video game development. Because greed is fucking catchy. It's contagious. 